Jay, I've got the console set up. Let's get some gaming in before the G team get here, man. Daz, life is about more than just games. You really need to try and broaden your horizon sometimes. Oh, Jay, yeah. underneath all my fan mail, there's one for you. Oh, cheers, mate. It's all always right. nice to get a bit of fan mail, eh? <laughs> Your next mate, Agent 47. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, <no>! Ask the girl. <laughs> so much wisdom, so little time. <sighs> Many wish to ask the guru. Only the chosen few get lucky. Who will get lucky today? Mike Harris will get lucky. He writes Guru. I played the original Mario Brothers the other day and Luigi was identical to Mario except for his green overalls. <clears throat> when did he lose all the weight and grow a few inches? <gasps> Mike, you are an observant one. Luigi was indeed identical to Mario in all but colour. In Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers and Super Mario Brothers 2, the Japanese version. It was only when a different game was released outside of Japan that Mario stayed the same, and Luigi grew taller and thinner. This was to explain the difference in jumping ability and speed between the two brothers. Up till this point, they had been identical. Next. Guru, I'm told there was once a comic relief computer game. Surely not. Simon Lewis. Ah, oh, but there was Simon. In 1992, a game called Sleepwalker was released for the Amiga, the Atari ST, and the Commodore 64. You played the part of a dog who had to control his sleepwalking master and stop him from coming to any harm. It was a bit like Lemmings, only rubbish. A portion of the proceeds, of course, went to charity. And if you ask me, I think they would have raised more money asking gamers to pay not to play it. Right. We're in the mobile pad. This is where we try and take things easy and uh, take care of some mobile gaming, right, sir? Indeed we are. Now, uh, what are we looking at today? We're looking at Spyro Fusion on the GBA. All right. Uh, what's it like? Well, you're controlling Spyro. It's a little side-scrolling platform adventure. Um, so you've got floating platforms. He's running along, flapping his wings and blowing fire at all the, uh, the enemies. And right. um, catching little gems as well, things like that. Yeah, carry on, sir. He's gone. Sorry. He's gone, he's gone. Cool. Um, yeah, so you're avoiding monsters, things like that, um, and also spikes that come out the wall and up the floor and things like that. The thing about this game is that it's been interspersed with loads and loads and loads of mini-games. All right, that's cool. Mini-games are cool, yeah. yeah we always like mini-games, especially on this little thing here. So what's the mini-games like? Um, perfect for a little fire-breathing dragon. <laughs> um, vertical and side-scrolling shooters where he's breathing fire and blowing up mines and things. You can also collect loads of trading cards. There's over 100 trading cards to collect. You've got link cable support for up to four okay, people. Okay, um, nice. And you can also trade with another game as well, not just Spyro Fusion. You've got the game that we looked at a little while ago, um, Crash Bandicoot Purple. Oh, yeah, but yeah, in yeah. Europe, it's called Crash Fusion. Okay. Um, and yeah, you can trade with that because the storylines overlap. So they're arch enemies of joined forces. That's and so, brilliant. Yeah, it's cool. I That's like that. That's a really good idea. I like that. Is it fun to play, though? Children absolutely going to adore this. Spyro's yeah. so cute, anyway. Um, and if you've got the other game, definitely the trading card element. You know, if you can link up with other people, yeah. that's where this game will come into its own. Who's this going to be for? Is it just for the younger gamer or can older gamers? Has picked this up and still enjoy it. To be honest, it's actually quite easy. That the platform elements aren't particularly difficult. Right. I mean, the, because of the diversity of the mini games, that will keep you interested. But um, it really is probably one for the younger gamers. So lots of hours gameplay, yeah. I think so. Nice one. No wonder we haven't seen it all day. Now I know why. <laughs> <laughs> Playing with Spyro all day. Yeah. Now, what's this going to get for a G rating? Um, there's lots to do. Definitely worth linking up with other people. And you can. It's, there's three cartridge slave slots in here. So. I think it deserves a good seven Gs. Absolutely, and there's lots of gameplay in this one, guys, so get on it. Right, Spyro Fusion on your GBA gets an official games rule rating of seven Gs. Right, now, he's definitely gone from here, so it must be time to see the one who lives up in a lift shaft. You know who it is. No introduction needed. Should we give him a bow, sir? Yeah, I think so. All right, let's do it. Games Guru, take it away. Old school. Ah, back in my lift shaft, back where I belong. Uh, hello. On with the education. Released on the Mega Drive in 1994, this was the last Fantasy Star game to be a single player experience. The story takes place some 1,000 years after the events of the second game. 
and taking control of Chaz Ashley, the apprentice to the legendary monster hunter Alice Brangwyn. You set out on a fantastical adventure of magic and swordplay. This game was one of the best 16-bit RPGs and one of the best games on the Mega Drive. <laughs> if you own the console but not this game, shame on you. <laughs> Yet another classic retro game from a classic figure. It was a good era. <laughs> hey, Missy. Famous. That's right, we don't mess around with fluffy weak reviews here. Oh no, no, we make our reviews count. So our reviews are always bang on the money and you know what to buy. Absolutely, but you're not Jamie Atiko. Unfortunately, I'm not, no. I'm Matt Cuttle because Jamie is uh, unfortunately ill in bed today with a nice hot cup of cocoa. Now, Jay, I know you've got your gamepad in your hand and I know you're having fun secretly. I want you to enjoy the show and get well soon, mate. Now, coming up on the show, we have also got some serious face-off action because I know you're used to seeing them on the slow lane on the M1, but today they're on the race track is super trucks and i said come here guys welcome to gamesville i'm baron malcolm unfortunately there is no jamie atiko today because jamie sounds very much like this that's right jamie has got a very very bad cold now jamie if you enjoy it if you're at home sitting at home resting relaxing all i can say mate is enjoy the show oh. very good that's how you make i'm very good uh, well you know missing my copy but oh, i know we all missed him yeah well, so what's going on man well, I've got some really good news for people who love their retro games. Anyone who liked, enjoyed specifically the Commodore 64. Oh, <laughs> you're talking to a Commodore 64 now? Well, I've got some great news for you because apparently there's a, there's a guy out there who's developed a Commodore 64 emulator that works on your mobile phone. You're joking, what? He plays all the old Commodore 64 games? All the old, all the old ROMs for the Commodore 64 emulator. Basically, you can download them as, as a message to your inbox. Yeah. And this new emulator, once you've got it installed on your phone, it will recognise the ROMs and, and automatically allow you to play them. Well, so. when you think about it, more phones today actually have more K than you, you, the computer did back then, right? That's right. I it's mean, it's only 64K. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So a, a, a mobile phone now is, is like much more powerful. Exactly. Yeah. But um, yeah, this it's, is a real, real big leap forward in, in mobile gaming in general. So we're going to see a lot of the old Commodore classics come back to your mobile phone. Yeah. Basically. Definitely. You'll see things like uh, I think I've seen a picture of Yar Kung Fu. <laughs> um, all, all types of games. Well, I'm going to be looking out for Bruce Lee uh, by US Gold, mate. I don't know about you. <laughs> Cheers, Sai. Now we all know that. That buying games can be a very, very expensive business. That's why we have got this lady from the G team, Sarah, who gives us the best in free downloadables. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm very well, thank you. And uh, this is usually Jamie doing this, but um, it's me today. So what have you got for me? Um, well, freebies today are very different, actually. The first one's really ones for younger gamers. Right. It's at a website called jellygames.com, and it's called Hungry Bird, and you're a seagull, and you're flying around, and you're trying to catch <laughs> fish. If you're not careful, you'll be taken out by this enormous white shark that then comes and drags <laughs> you under see. the ice. Quite disturbing, really, but if you're very young, but I really enjoy this That's game. That's excellent. So who sent that in? Um, no one sent this one in. This is one I just came oh, across wicked. by chance. Excellent. But the whole site's got some really good games for yeah. younger gamers. There's a good one called Rats, which is a game of cat and mouse, or cat and rat, really, but it's good fun. You've got to Brilliant. try and get the cheese and avoid the cat. Um, this next one is one for the older gamer, really. Um, it's from gamershell.com. Loads of downloads at this site. Really good downloads for all different types of genre game. This is a Ubisoft um, demo that's been released recently. Um, it's a play demo of lock-on modern air combat so you're flying around in the most amazing aircraft and brilliant so we know that ubisoft they always uh, they, they're very big on military games such as ghost recon so they've actually got a free downloadable now right so yeah but they have it's a combat flight sim where you get to fly and um, quick start missions for different types of um, aircraft Real Top Gun style but I couldn't get my weapons to work. I don't know whether that's because it's the demo <laughs> and not, that you can't. you're not good at it, is it? Well, I don't know. Maybe I was doing something really <laughs> obviously wrong, but I that's mean, it's fantastic. good fun to play and it looks really good, so I'd recommend this one. Brilliant. Well, excellent stuff. Thank you, Sarah. Now, from freebies to your messages. Now, we've got our first one from Ian Cosserill. He has a question for me and he wants to know what games character would you most like to exist in real life? Well, I'd definitely say Solid Snake. He's very tough and I wouldn't mind him being my bodyguard. And the second one is from Kevin Jarvis and he wants to know who is the best gamer in the G team. Well, I don't want to start any fights, but I've got to say, Simon over here is definitely the best at Street Fighter. Any Street Fighter game, do not come near this guy. And Matt Cuttle, he's not here today, but he is a definitely the best at first-person shooters. Now, if you want to send anyone here a message, including me and Jamie, unfortunately, who's not here today, it's very, very simple. Press that red button on your remote. This is for UK digital satellite viewers. Press that red button on your remote and get interactive. It will cost you 25p, so please ask the bill payer for permission first. Now it's time to go over to our Lucy, who's got a wicked first glance look for us. 
Lewis, Lewis, check this out. We've got early code to today's first glance. It's the prelude to Lord of the Rings title, and we get to see it.